Hi everyone, it's Travelling, and I'm back again with another episode of Talking About Jesus. And my guest today is my good friend and my close friend and, my, and a, a true brother in Christ, Paul Walton. And, you know, Jesus is so important to each, each one of us, but our experience and our walk with Jesus is totally different. So, hi Paul, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, good. It's good to be here. You're welcome, Paul. Um, you've got quite an interesting story, really, of, about your walk with Jesus, haven't you? Well, quite a long one, I suppose. You, 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 you know, you, you could say that. Um, yeah, it, it's it started where where we used to live. You know, very run down area, very poor, um, big family. I suppose a lot of people can relate to that. You know. Um, we did that to make anything, <clears throat> any Christmas presents, what we had. They were made, my dad would make them, you know, um, garages and, and stuff like that. We never, we never had enough money to buy anything. So it was very, you know, um, lonely times, very lonely times. Um, ended up being a bit of a loner, you know, um, there was, a, there was a big big gap between the rest of my brothers, you know, and myself. Um, so I always felt alone sort of thing. So I would just go wandering off on my own. And uh, the, although it, it had its good points, it's one day it, you know, it, it came to a crunch and, you know, and uh, I was... I was assaulted by a man, you know, um, which I don't want to go into too much. You no, know, well, so. if, if, we, if we skip the early, the early years, Paul, and just talk about how, you know, how your walk has been with Jesus, if you just want to just um, sort of encapsulate very, very shortly, um, yeah. and, and maybe in two minutes of, of what your life was like. I know that you worked at the nightclubs, you were a bouncer. I know that you were very handy. Uh <laughs> You know, if there was any trouble around, um, yeah. but you know, you've you've walked away from that life, haven't you? Or that life has walked away from you. Which one is it? Well, it it, it was very very strange. Uh, it was like I I call it uh, the Damascus Road experience. What I had, it very similar to what Paul had on the uh, on the Damascus Road. Um, this pastor of the church, you know. With the life I had, uh, you know, both my parents were born were, were Christians, and uh, oh, I got so sick of hearing about about all these wonderful things what this God would do, you know. But He wasn't doing them for me, you know. Uh, I, I still had empty belly, and and I, and I still had to fight all all the time. And um, I started going down the road of first of all, I started weight training and. We used to start going boxing at the uh, Crescent Police Station, which is the main police station near where I lived in Salford, which was, like I said, it was a very, very run-down area at the time I'm talking about. Uh, Teddy Stowsies, uh beetles in most houses and mice, rats, you name it, we got it there, you know. And, um, yeah, I got into, I got to that stage where, you know, I was a very good boxer. I was, um, I won medals for boxing. Um, started weight training. Uh, started messing around with martial arts. And one day a guy asked me, uh, he, he came over to me, this guy came over to me and he asked me, did I know Jesus? And I said, and I started laughing. I laughed in his face, actually. And he said to me, he said, you know, that I was a sinner and that, you know, that Christ had paid my, my debt. I said, and Christ had never paid any debt for me. You know, that's, that's how it was with me. You know, I said, Christ has never paid any, any debt for me. And uh, he called me a sinner, you know, which really angered me. And I found out that he was a pastor and uh, he'd come down from Glasgow. He was a bit of a reputation himself, which to me as a young man uh, at that time was like waving a red rag 
in front of a bull, you know. I, I don't know whether that works or not, but I'm told that that's what they do. And um, I I went down to the church. I'm obviously, I've, I've been to the church. I've been, you know, because both my parents were Christians as as a, as a young man, young young child, I, you know, I was I would see things happening, you know, and um, I mean, I suppose my first thing was this man in the church who who I was only a young lad at the time, maybe seven, came over to my mum and he put his hand on my mum and my mum went to the floor, and you know, I know what it is now. She was slain in the spirit. But as a young, young, a young lad, you know, this was my mum, and someone was hurting her, and I—it's like I turned into a cat, and I wrapped myself around his leg, and I sunk my teeth into his leg, you know, I, you know, I got a really good, good idea of my father for it, you know. I mean, my, my dad was what you call a, a man's man. He was big fella. He was a very strong man, and you know, I, I got a really good idea for it, you know, and I thought, well. All I was doing was protecting my mum, you know, and here they here I'm getting a good idea for it. So 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 going, going back to, to the to the, the, the minister who came down from Glasgow, you said he had yeah. he told you that Jesus loved you and where what happened yeah. there? Well, I went to the I went to the church um just just to get even more than anything, you know. Um how, how, how would you describe saying, to get even, Paul? What, what was what, what well, would that look like? You know, I was going to give him a good idea. Oh, right, I mean, okay. It was as simple as that, you know. Um, but you know, I, I had enough enough thing up here that you know it it, it was it, it had to be his word against my word. So I know I couldn't do anything in the church. So I, the, the, I waited for the call to come up and. He asked, asked me if I know, know, does anybody want to know, accept Jesus into the life? Well, my hand went up so fast, you know, and he asked me would I come out to the front, and I said no, you know, and I said, you know, I'd, I'd rather be on my own, do it on my own. So he, he took me outside, and I started manoeuvring, backed him into a corner. I know how martial arts work, you know, and I knew if I got really close up and personal to him, really close up to him, you know, um, I must say, uh, just 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 for um, just as a backup, I had a piece of three b two waiting in case he was he was tougher than what I thought he was. I had this piece of three b two waiting for him. That's a piece of wood. I know in in some places it's not called three b two, but three inches long by two inches, you know, a piece of wood. And, um, you know, I, had a, I, had a, I was ready for putting it over his head. Anyway, I backed him into this corner. Now, I can honestly say that there was nobody else there. There was just him, him and myself. Yet something hit me so hard on the back of my head, I went down like a poleaxed cow, if you know what that is, you know, I hit the floor so hard, boom, and I, I don't know why, I really don't know why, but I remember crying, and, and I, I, the more I cried, I, I, I felt that this, I suppose the only word I could think of it was evil coming out of me, this wickedness coming out of me, because I didn't know that I turned into this wicked horrible person you know um i didn't know that had happened it just sort of crept up and that's exactly what the devil does he just creeps up on us you know um and so i there there they am on the floor just like the you know with, with paul you know the the the, the bright light and he, he he fell off his horse and you know jesus spoke to him and he said why well, why did you persecute me? You know, but I didn't hear the voice say, "And you know, Paul, why, why are you doing what you're doing?" You know, it just happened, and and I and I, I remember being on the floor, and as I said, I felt this vial coming out of me, and the more I did, the more I cried, and the more, and 
I looked up and I saw this hand bent down to pick me up. And I took hold of this hand to help me up because I, my head was still buzzing this time. And I took hold of this hand and it was this man who put his hand out. You know, this man who I wanted to really make a mess of, really make an example. You don't come down. I don't care where you where the boxing gloves go, you come from. You don't come down to the north and mess with it, you know, and, and, and start calling. You know, I could call myself a sinner, but don't you call me a sinner, you know. And um, I went down with all this and I came up totally changed. So, so, you know, I went so to the church. God transformed to... your life then? Oh, yeah, yeah, there and then, yeah. Wow. I went into the church, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I said to this man, I said, I want to accept Jesus into my life, which was so real at that time. You know, when I, when I accepted Jesus into my life, the, the, more than anything else, what, what I felt, what I felt was where they felt this, this used to feel this anger, and this bitterness and this hurt, you know, um, I felt joy for the first time for a long, long time. And everything that passed away, you know, I became a new creation. My old life had passed away. Yeah, it talks about that in 2 Corinthians 5, um, 517. Paul says, we are yeah. a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So so since you had that that new beginning... If you like that, being born again, that restart. What's it been like? Um, you know, overall. And I mean, I know you can't. You've got so much to talk about because um, you haven't told me yet how long ago this took place. By the way. Well, I, I was a young man. I was in my twenties when that when that happened. Um, oh, okay. Because I've been in the church a, a couple, of, a, probably be a couple of years. Um, God helped me birth a church. You know, that he helped me birth this church, um, which started off, you know, in this in this same man's house, in his wow. flat. Uh and and God blessed it and blessed it and blessed it, you know, and until, you know, the building what we the place where we was using, we had to get a library, rented a room in the library, and then we started looking for a place. And you know, it, it just, God just blessed everything. I wasn't saying it I'm not saying it it, it was easy. There's a thing come in the middle of me screen here. Do I need to do Don't anything? Worry about it. No, leave it. It's all right. Forget it. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Well, where was you up to? Yeah, I'm well, not saying... You, you, said you were talking about the fact, obviously, that you ended up with the church, but we, we don't want to go into specifics about that. What's, mm. what's your life with Jesus been like since? I mean, you know, well, in all those years as a Christian and believing in what happened and seeing the change, you know, in what way did your life continue to change, Paul? If if I if I was to say, oh, my life has been fantastic and, and brilliant and, and everything's gone right and rosy, I'd be telling lies. You know, like everybody else, you know, Jesus said, he said, you know, he never said that we wouldn't have trials and he never said that we wouldn't have tribulations. You know, still... You know, uh, which have you know, steel has to go through the fire, and as it goes through that fire, it changes and it gets its strength. And so, yeah, I've been through the fire a few times. Maybe a lot of your, a lot of these people they would be able to relate to that, you know. But God allows us to go. You know, God never causes things to happen for us. He uses things, what happens in our life, to strengthen us, to build us up, you know. And um, yes, it, but would I have? Would I? Would I? Would I go back? No chance. No way. Uh, what I've got now, what I have now, is much more. You know, it was like winning the lottery. How I would imagine winning the lottery, you know. Because I know, I know that I know that I know that my Saviour lives and that one day I'm going to see my mum and dad. 
I'm going to see my brothers and my, my, my brothers and sisters who have gone on. You know, um, I'm going to see my lovely wife. You know, she, she's she's here with me now, but you know, we we're, we're never going to be parted. Amen. You know, and uh, he, he, he told me um, because obviously, like I said, I've known you for for quite a few years. You told me that the Lord many 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 years ago told you to buy a guitar or mentioned um, about yeah. being um, yeah. in, a, in a group. Can you, can you just very briefly? I, I, was, I was 27 years of age at that time. Not long ago then, Paul. Eh? Not long ago. Yeah. yeah. A bit too long ago, like, you know, I was a good-looking lad then. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I was 27 at the time, and um, I was in the church, doing some work in the church, which is what I used to do. I used to do a lot of work in the church. Uh, I did all the roof and uh, replastered it and just things, you know, in the in the church. And uh, it was during one of those things when I was in the church, you know. I I had this vision, and I saw myself in this vision. I saw myself on a platform playing the guitar. Now, I don't play guitars. I didn't at that time. I did not play the guitar, you know. Um, so time went by. Right? We, we, had to, we raised our children, my, my wife and myself. And, you know, my wife, my first wife passed away and I was left on my own with, to, 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 to bring these children up, which, which I did, you know. Brought them up in with the with the right way. About playing the guitar just seemed to just go, you know. It was a thing, and I, and I and I thought, well, if God's gonna birth this and if God's gonna bring this to to being, you know, I'm not gonna try to work it anything. God doesn't need my help, you know. God doesn't need me sticking me my my piece in and saying, well, Lord, you say you give me this vision, and, and you know. <clears throat> But so, did God, did God let, let you down at all on that? Did, you know, did He fulfil that which He promised you? Well, when I when 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 I come to my retirement age of sixty six, I retired when I was sixty six, and uh, I was sitting in the house one day, and just out of the blue, just like that, just out of the blue, I heard this voice, not of, not of outside voice, an internal voice. And he said to me, go and get your guitar, Paul. And I said, what? Where did that come from? And I said it again, go and get your guitar. So I went round to our local, at the time, which was our local guitar shop. And I saw this guitar, which they had there. Should have been, I think it was, at the time, I think it should have been about £500 which was a lot of money. And, um, well, to me it was anyway. It was it's 500 really pounds. Yeah. And uh, been reduced to 300 pounds. Wow. In a sale. Bargain. I thought, wow. I'll get this, some, you know, and I, and so I, I got the guitar on my credit card and I got an amplifier and I got a bag for it and all the, all the, all the stuff that I would need you know, what I thought I would need. And uh thought, what do I do now? So I ended, I ended up and I thought, well, I've got to start to play this guitar. Now, the only the only tune I could play was bring. That was the only thing I could do. Bring. But, but, bring. But, but no. moving forward, Paul, you actually play now, don't you? And the, and your wife really plays along with you as well, doesn't she? She does, yeah. So God fulfilled uh, His word. Yeah. So so we looked around and um, to, to, for someone to 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 just to, to play the guitar. And you know, where this is where I say I ran before God. I took over the reins or thought I did. And you know what it did? It ended up costing me, I think it was about altogether, £400 what we paid out in lessons, about £400. 
with the with two different um, people who were supposed to be learning us. And the only thing what I what I could play after after all this was uh well, which one was it? it? Was a Johnny Cash um, Ring of Fire. I fell into a ring of fire. You know, and all the thing what my wife could play was these boots are made for walking. You know, not the full song, just that's it. These boots are made for walking. And that was the only thing. Just at this time, a man a man came into the church which was it, which was attending at the time. Now, the church which which I was attending, I lived quite quite a distance from it. And um this man came into the church and um He, he, he I sat here talking to this man and he, he brought some leaflets down and it was about this thing called uh, Tash Jesus. Tash Jesus? What's that all about? We don't need to go on that one, Paul. We can skip that bit. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so... Um, anyway, so... This, this man said to me, you know... I was telling this man about how, how, I play, how we, we, we got these guitars, and the first thing he'd done was started to... Ch -ch 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 he got all these papers out, and they meant nothing to me. I looked at them, and they meant nothing to me, you know. And uh, I went, I went, I went uh, the, the following month, and um, I told him that... Because this man had said to me, he said, you've got to get rid of that guy. He's not helping you at all. So I did do. We got rid of these this this fellow who was teaching us at the time, and uh, and then I, then I said, well, who's going to teach us to play the guitar? And this man said, I'm going to teach you. You know, so um, it, God has just blessed us, blessed the blessed us since then. You know, we've um, I have a new wife now. You know, well. You know, it's not the same wife, which, which you know, uh, wonderful woman, my Lily May, and um, we both got the guitars. We both struggled with it. You know, I'm not saying it's been easy, been easy for us to to to, to learn, but we we persevered and we we've just kept on going, and you know, we got asked to play in one place and. They must have liked what we were doing, and then we got asked to play in another place, and then we got asked to play at our local, our local church near where we live. Um, until one day, a man came came in, into uh, came in into the thing like, and he he said to us, uh, he knew somebody who, who lived in Dorset at the church in Dorset, and uh, this is his number. Get in touch with him. He'd, he'd love for you to go down. Well, my daughter lived in Dorset and uh, in Lyme Regis. And um, so I phoned this fellow up and he said, oh, he said, I'd love for you to come down. So we said we'd make an holiday of it and, and, and we'd see our, our daughter while we were down there. And um, it, 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 we just turned it, you know, I think I think that particular time there, I think it was. Did you about... actually play in the church? Did you, Paul? Did you play in the yeah, church? Yeah, yeah. We played about fifteen, about fifteen songs. Wow. Well, do you know what they said then? Now, I, I just gonna, I just need to say this piece. After after we after we we we, we played these songs and we just couldn't, and, and I said to the pastor of the church, "I'll how many more do you want?" And he said, "Well, how many have you got in your book?" <laughs> so. I said, well, there's a lot in the book and I'll never get through them tonight. I think there was about, about 80 songs in it, you know. Um, not bad, really, when you think about it. A guy who didn't start playing the guitar till he was 66, you know. And here we are now down Dorset playing in a church, you know, praising our God, you know. And um, so so we, um, we, played, we, 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 we played these songs. Anyway, this... Uh, the pastor came to me and he said to me, he said, would you pray for my wife? So I said, yeah, because that is part of our ministry. We, we do what's called a body ministry. We don't play, I don't touch the praise and worship because there are people doing that. God has brought me down this path and I won't change from it. You know, if, if God has 
called me to be a, a doorman. I'm never going to stoop to be a king. So um, we, we pray for his wife. And then his wife asked me, would I pray for his pastor? Because his pastor has been pretty poorly. And we, 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 we played there. Next thing I know, the church was coming up one by one by one by one. And we were, we were praying for him and we were anointing him with oil. And then this one man came forward. This one man came forward. And as I put my hand out to pray for him, I felt someone put their hand on my chest and pushed me back. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak inside me. said, I don't want you to pray, Paul. Just say to this man, you've got a foot in two camps. Choose this day who you will serve. And I'm going to record that to people who's listening to this. If you have a foot in two camps, choose this day who you will serve. And um, so I did this. Didn't know nothing about anything. The pastor came to me and he said to me, he said, has somebody said something to you about, and he said his name. And I said, no. I said, no, nobody said nothing. He said, I have to tell you something, Paul. He said, I believe God is speaking to me. And he said, for three years, three, excuse me if I start filling up with this because it is quite emotional. He said, for three years, we've been praying for the salvation of that man. He said, you see him now, and here he is a Christian. But in the morning, he'll have, he'll have all his Muslim stuff on. He'll become a Muslim. He'll sit with the Muslims and he'll do, you know, and he, and he, and he says the prayers with the Muslims and, you know, not that, is, not that I'm speaking against Muslims in any way, shape or form. I'm not. No. I am saying what this man was, was um, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. what was happening in, in this man's life. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, oh, to, to, sum, to sum that up, that's, you know, that's not a good place to be, really, because you can't have a foot in both camps, can you? We can't, no. So yeah. so anyway, we, we, we got home from Dorset and the pastor phoned me up and he said, Paul, he said, I have to tell you something. He said, you've got to come down. <laughs> I said, you're not around the corner. You're nearly 300 odd miles away. I said, you're not around the He said, but you've got to come down. He said, we're having a burning. I said, what do you mean you're having a burning? He said, we're having a party. This man has repented of all what he's done. He's changed, he's changed his beard off and he's this, this, and, you know. I'm just saying what, what it was, you know, what this, what, what they said, you know, totally, totally changed him. Do you know, it goes on from, 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 from one thing to another. Do you know, we went to America to, 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 to see my daughter in Boston, Massachusetts, and we was, we was took to a church there, never seen it, never known nothing about it before, you know, um, Walked into this church in America, in Boston, Massachusetts, and it, well, in Springfield it was actually a spring, place called Springfield, and uh, we went in there. And before you say, before anyone does say anything, there was no little yellow people there with with funny hair, you know, uh, that's on the television. But um, yeah, so we went in there, and and the, the pastor of the church, he said, he said. It was on a stroll Tuesday, on a stroll Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday, sorry. And um, he, then he, he said, Paul, he said, can you introduce your family to us? So I introduced, and all my family, my immediate family, both my daughters, my grandchildren, my son-in-laws, they were all there. We all went. And I introduced them all, who they was. And he said, Paul, can you come out and give us a word? Wow. Well, do you know, just like that, I, I, I've never claimed to be a preacher. I've never claimed to have a platform ministry. But, you know, as I'm walking down this passageway to the front, I'm thinking, Lord, put some words in my mouth. Please put some words in my mouth. What, what am I going to speak about? And God 
was Yannabi's word. I won't go into all what he, what he, what he said because I, I, you know, I do that maybe maybe get the opportunity to do that some other time. But then I finished, but finished speaking and I, and I finished just sharing with this man what I, you know, what I believed God had said to me. So he said to me, "Would you pray for me now, Paul?" He said, "Would you pray for me?" So we anointed him with oil. We lay hands on him, and we anointed him. Then the strangest thing happened. He sets off running round the church, <laughs> legging it round the church. Legging it means running fast, uh, running round the church, shouting, "Praise the Lord! Hallelujah!" And I'm stood there looking at him. And I, I leaned over to the, the assistant pastor, and I said to the assistant pastor, "I said." What, you know, he said, Paul, I have to tell you something. He said, that man who's running around the church now, I, this week has just been diagnosed. He, he's, he's been told by his doctors. He has to have permanent rest. He's got a uh, irregular heartbeat. Wow. And here's this man running around the church shouting, praise the Lord. People ask me, is, is, is Jesus real? Well, I'm here today to tell you it's very, very real. Amen. I, I want you to do something. I want you to take your hand and put your hand on your face. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Even when that hand is on your face, Jesus is even closer than that. Amen. Amen. Even closer than that. Amen. And he's never, for those of you who know him as your own Lord and Saviour, he's never going to never gonna leave you, nor forsake you, Amen. until the end Amen. of the earth. That's right. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's been an incredible journey for you. And I know there's a lot, you could have filled in a lot of gaps in that, but we're limited for time. And we've got to be very careful. Obviously, people don't want to watch um, a two-hour um, testimony, unfortunately. But, you know, they can get hold of you through through Test Jesus. Yeah. Um, the details are coming up on the bottom there. So if anybody wants to um, to get in touch with Paul, Please uh, find us on YouTube and you can find us on Facebook as well. And uh, yeah, Paul, it's just absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for coming today and sharing your testimony. Um, and I just pray that, that the Lord will bless you and Lily and your family and give you the desire of your heart because all that God wants to do is to lavish his love upon his children. And, you know, the, the Bible tells us that we are now adopted and we're sons of God. We are sons of God. Father. Thank yes. you so much, Paul. Daddy, yes. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you in your house, Paul. Thank you so much. Bless you, Trevor. Take care now. Bye. Bye now.